I don't know. I'm really excited about this episode today. Uh, Anthony has really put in a lot of work in the push-ups on this, uh, these show notes, uh, lists on lists, uh, talking about personal and organization and, and, and really organization for your organization. It's uh, really critical and it's a great topic uh, to discuss today. Some amazing pro tips in this, so I look forward to listening to this. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to our uh, main and only sponsor, Hillcrest Foods. If you are a local restaurant and looking for a distributor that uh, cares about what you care about and puts your goals first, uh, Hillcrest Foods is the number one place to be. So uh, check them out online at hillcrestfoods.com. Imagine a perfect world where you can build a restaurant, open the doors, and make loads of money. Unfortunately, those days are over. It takes great leadership, hard work, and long hours to operate a successful restaurant. Together, we can make it happen. This is Restaurantopia. All right, welcome back to Restaurantopia. We've got another incredible episode for you today. Our man, Anthony Hamilton, has put together some great notes here and a topic that he's very passionate about, step-by-step, lists on lists. Back at it is uh, Brian Seitz. Good morning. Anthony Hamilton. Good morning to you. And Dave Ross. That's me. Nice. So, Anthony, what's up, bud? Just trying to stay organized over here. You know, now's the time of year where where things kind of culminate for me and, and it's imperative that I stay organized. And I started thinking about this the other day. and It was like, it's obnoxious the amount of lists that I write. And I was curious how you guys feel about lists and, and what do you do to stay organized? Huge fan of the list. My problem is I get like list overload and then I have like 17 lists that I then <laughs> on Sunday morning, I get to consolidate into like one ginormous list. And it's like, I don't know, but there's something so fulfilling about having a list and crossing off that task once it's completed. I, I got to be honest, I'm, I got a little bit the same. Like. I feel like with all the technology, and I've tried so many different electronic things. You try the phone, you try this, you try that, you try an app, you try all this stuff. But to have a list written in front of me on paper, mm-hmm. I can't get away from. No. You know what I mean? For certain things. I mean, there's there's all kinds of like, you know, I'll do notes on the computer to save for later, different stuff. But yeah. for tasks and stuff that I want to get done in a certain period of time, i got to have it on a piece of paper. No I'm question. the same way. It, it, so... M- I'm the same way too. Like pen and paper is the only way for me to go about it. Yeah, I use the technology. I love Microsoft OneNote. I, I love Outlook. I love all these things. The notes section on my phone, they're all good, but they're all temporary for me. Like my permanent landing zone is most definitely pen and paper. And I don't know what it is about just writing. It kind of etches it into your brain a little bit better, you know, and, and I'm sure there's some psychological stuff. I, I think that. I think there's some science to that, that when you, yeah. you know, they say when you actually write something out, the retention, you know, is, is, I don't know what the percentages are and we could probably look it up, but you know, there is something to that. Yeah. No, and I think there's also something to be said about capturing it on paper so you're not constantly thinking about it. Like if to get it out of your brain, to get it out of your brain or at least put it to the back of your brain and it alleviates any anxiety that I have. Once I know I have the list and like and then I'll sub it out to like, oh, I need to do this task, this task, this task to accomplish this item. Boom. Like once I have that, then it's on the next thing and I can I can move a lot faster. Yeah. See, I think you're onto something there. And a lot, you said the word anxiety a lot, right? Mm-hmm. So and I get a lot of stuff swirling around my brain. But when I put it on a piece of paper, all of a sudden it seems achievable. It seems smaller than what it is. Yeah. I think that helps me tremendously as far as my task orientation. I think it a lot of it comes back to anxiety because I, I know if I have a lot going on at the office I wake up at three thirty, four o'clock and my mind is already churning really yeah every day like the, for the last like on purpose no 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 just my I just wake up you just get up I, yeah. I just wake up and now, now I'm, I'm laying there and I'm I'm on my phone I'm making lists I'm, I'm thinking about what I have to do and this kind of sense of overwhelming anxiety is yeah. occurring and I'm like oh I got to capture this I got to make sure I don't miss this and that is all because I, I'm not doing enough list or I Right. I have too much to do. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's crazy. I, I didn't know that. I mean, three thirty, four o'clock, that's staggering, right? No, it's a, it, like I'd say for the last three weeks, every morning. Yeah. And, and what happened? Is there something different or just time of year? Or? Just time of year, just closing deals and yeah, just getting, sure. getting things done and just this arbitrary December 31st deadline that, you know, it's yeah, yeah. that we put on ourselves that this is. Do you want to lay down? No, no, I'm, I'm fine. I mean, maybe tell us about your, you know, relationship with your parents or something. Or well, you get I mean, all Freud out. Can we can we really get a dig into this? A I, bit, it's, uh, you know, it's, how's that make you feel? I. So, what are you feeling right now? What are these things you call feelings? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not familiar. I forget. Yeah, I forgot you were a lawyer, right? There's zero emotion. I left mine at home. Yeah. <laughs> huh. To bring a bucket of teardrops too? I mean, how's, how's it work? <laughs> mine just go to Ziploc bag. I don't yeah, need a bucket. <laughs> Oh, that's awesome. That's less environmental impact that way. Anyway, moving on. So 
part of the reason why I wanted to bring this this topic up is that I think a lot of times we look at the, the list and what we're talking about now and how it affects us, but we don't necessarily think about how our lack of organization affects other people. Mm-hmm. And I think that's so important to, to do that. And I go back to my, my operating days and maybe it was a request off or maybe it was an important date or maybe something had, you know, someone had something important they wanted to sit down and discuss with me. And if I didn't write it down or put it on my calendar to that instance, there was a high propensity that I was going to forget it. Mm-hmm. And I didn't quite realize the impact that had is, is me being a leader on one of my employees, right? For me, it was no big deal. It was like, yeah, I missed a meeting, so what? I have 100 meetings going on. Who cares? We'll get the next one. We'll reschedule this. It's not a big deal. Yeah. But I really started intellectualizing this process and realizing, my God, like I might have been crushing someone's dreams, right? Like they woke up that morning, 3, 30, 4 o'clock with anxiety and, and they're churning and they're worried about the discussion we're about to have. Um, and then only to show up and me not have time for it, right? And then I started thinking, I'm like, my God, like how often does this happen? Well, and also, you know, wh- what's the worst thing you can do to somebody? waste their time oh it's their number yeah, one resource yeah. that's, that's a great so, point. so you know it's not only i mean the anxiety all those things you're talking about but then they literally are there you're not there and yeah. especially if you're in a leadership position yeah i mean that just looks horrible i feel you know no. what i mean so like as leaders like we should be the ones that are there early we should be the ones that are there you know what i mean like you know yeah, no <clears> perfect <throat> but i never thought of it that way yeah i thought well i'm the leader i got so much going on i'm excused right like you got to give me a pass on yeah, this yeah, but right. it's quite the opposite right. i think you bring up a, a, an incredibly no the responsibility point. is greater but yeah, it goes absolutely I, I agree with both of you it goes back to I, I think in my mind laziness so it takes an extra five seconds to do a list so easy to do but people don't do it it's the same as you know that there's an email that you need to respond to or you need to do something with and you're like hey can you resend me that email because they can't find it in there mm-hmm. like just you should have responded at that moment or saved it and, and flagged it at that moment like, yeah to do things contemporaneous in the moment i'm sorry wait what was that word contemporaneous yeah that's awesome that is not in my lexicon oh, okay but if you do it at the moment think of how much more you're going to get accomplished versus waiting three weeks trying to find the email, responding to the email, trying to capture all your notes and everything that you were thinking about at the time, there's that efficiency adage where it's like, if you can do it in two minutes, just do it and get it done. Yeah. Because it will take you 30 minutes to kind of, to try to revisit this. That's the old email rule, right? Yeah. You can handle it in one or two minutes, do Mm -hmm. it. And if not move on. Correct. Yeah. And so you brought up a good point there because the way I manage my emails, as the emails come in, like, so say Dave needs something, right? He's like, Hey, I need some menu ideas for this Mm -hmm. person or whatever. Like I, I'm quick to take that email, put it, write it on my to-do list and then delete the email. But okay. once it's on my to-do list, it's trapped because that's like my Bible, right? I write that at least twice a day. When I wake up first thing in the day, I get my day prioritized much like you do just on your phone. And then at the end of the day, I rewrite it after I've crossed everything off. But to your point, Dave, it's so satisfying crossing things off that list. So satisfying. But again, going back to the important stuff that, that employees have to deal with and, and you may be overlooking as, a, as an employer, things like 30-day reviews, 90-day reviews, six-month reviews, mm-hmm. maybe they're not so important to us. But again, these people look forward to that, right? Like maybe there's a possibility they're getting a raise or, or there's some sort of pot of gold at the end of the rainbow or they're going to get some positive feedback or something. And, and yet we don't do them the justice because we can't be bothered with being organized enough. I, I told my associate this yesterday. If I don't review with you quarterly or on a regular basis shame on me because mm-hmm. you're not going to grow as a professional and you're not going to get better unless i critique you and now our our mentor always says you know as long as that person knows that you come from a place of love that feedback is going to be re- well received the, the employee the person needs to know that you love and care about them number one before they're going to even open their ears to take on the criticism. I agree with you. To, t- to take it in there with the right heart. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Because, you know, that criticism can come off as like, oh, Brian's such a, you know, this, that. Yeah, no, be, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, but and, but and when they know you care for them, correct. and they're like, you know what? <clears throat> I do do that. Or, you know what I mean? Like, I could get better at that. Like, And, and you, you become less defensive sure. because it is human nature to be like, no, I'm, I, I, I got that blue ribbon in the third grade. My mm-hmm. mom said I was handsome. Like, I'm the best. <laughs> Like this is wait, wait, wait. <laughs> go back to that psychology thing. Can we talk more about this? <laughs> You're not funny. <laughs> yes, not, You're not funny. You're, You're not, not handsome. Funny, yeah. Dad, Dad always told me I wasn't funny. No, it's funny. <laughs> Hysterical. No, that's good stuff. No, so go back to that. You know, it, and I love that because if you do know the person's from a place of love and, and it's unconditional, then you can handle the radical candor they're about to give you. And yeah. from a place of leadership, it, it's certainly advantageous. And if you can find a way to love your employees, typically it's you know developed. But it becomes much easier at that point in time for a lot of reasons. No, but you showing them you love them by 
honoring their time, you making lists. Mm-hmm. The more organized you are, the better a boss you're going to be. And I feel that, that employees, and we've said this in past episodes, they want to do a good job. Yeah. There's nobody that wakes up and goes, man, I'd really like to be crummy at my job today. Yeah, right? I'd, I'd like you know, to they, mail it in. Yeah, they, like they the, want to do a good job. So you giving them critical feedback, spending time, you know, being organized and, and honoring their time, those are all great things that just continue to build that relationship between the you and the employee. Well, and whether it's whoever in your organization, you know, when they make a list and that they're organized and they're focused – you got a line cook. What are the 10 things that you need to do tonight yeah. to, for us to have a successful night? And we'll get to that. I love it. Yeah. No. So, and that may be the worst feeling ever. And I don't know if you guys have ever been in that position, but it's like, you know, you, you finally drum up the courage to speak to your boss and maybe you're looking for a raise or maybe you're looking for some time off or something, which both of those things are very hard to come by in the, in the I, restaurant industry, right? I'm busy. I'm busy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like new phone, who dis, right? <laughs> But then when you sit down with this person, you finally bring up the, the gumption to sit down with them and say you're you know, a younger kid, especially because I think it's it's more relevant then. Um, you sit down with them and then the whole time they're disengaged during the meeting. They're on their phones. They don't oh. have time. It's the worst feeling in the world, you know. So I, I kind of just wanted to talk about this. So so maybe at least one person out there doesn't perpetuate this and maybe become self-aware and realize the impact that they have. Because as an employer, as a leader, as a chef, as an owner – People look up to you, and I think we forget that. We forget how much people respect us, look up to us, and talk about us when we're not around. And we can't take that for granted. You could, you could easily wield that as, as advantageous power, or it can be a huge disadvantage depending on how you manage it. I think being present in your meetings is so important and so foreign to what what our society is doing with the, the technology. Yeah. To, to be there and to be like, well, I'm here, I'm 100% in on this, and I respect you as an employee, and, and, and we're going to have a, an open dialogue, but you have my undivided attention. And yeah. I think I think that's true with your children and, and employees and friends and spouses, everyone. It's hard, too, because you know in the back of your head you don't have the time for this meeting, and you still accept it. Oh, And you got to have that discipline to say no, right? And be like, you know what, now's not the time because I can't give you that attention. But Or, or limit it, say, I'm... You, we're gonna. This is 15 minutes. We got a hard stop, but I, I'm gonna give you 100 percent of my attention in these 15 minutes. Love that. Yeah. Or if somebody comes in, because this happens to me, you know, a decent amount at the office, is that people will just drop in mm-hmm. and start into something, and I found myself accepting that time with that person, but not really accepting it. So they're they they came in. They, you know, they interrupted yeah. me, but I'm allowing them to. I'm not engaged in what they're going through. So it was really a waste of time. Where what I should do is say, you know what, uh, this isn't a good time. Like, let's schedule, you know what I mean? And then actually give them dedicated time, you know, if I can in that moment. You know what I mean? No, and, and be respectful to that person when you, you know, they're not operating a 7-Eleven. You can't just do, dip, you know, drop in on them. And we have to be conscious when we do this. And I know I do this, too, so I'm probably more culprit of this. But, you know. Oh, we all are. Yeah, you know? we, we pop in and it's like, oh, this person still has... 10 hours worth of work to do like they're going to do it tonight like that's what i always think like if you know steve pops into my office and and we talk for 30 minutes i like steve and i'm happy to talk to steve but like then i'm, I'm working 30 minutes tonight when i get home yeah so that's just the, the plain and short of it because your to-do list told you you had to work unless we want to order more paper i mean the to-do list is only going to get longer so i gotta, <laughs> yeah, I gotta, get, exactly. stuff, I gotta get stuff done yeah, right you sure. gotta stay ahead of it and I, I think that might be the anxiety you gotta be ahead of that wave right because if you fall behind it's it's over no, it's like email. It, you know, you go away for a week on vacation. I check my email every day. Absolutely. I'm still, work, I'm still working. Otherwise, I get back and I miss stuff. I could have taken care of stuff with a simple response. Like, I, I feel like I have to be engaged. Mm-hmm. And I still enjoy my vacation. No, I'm with you, though. I can't fully relax unless I know that my bosses are checked. Yeah. Unless my emails and anything urgent is taken care of. You know, a lot of those emails can get, get back shelf, but I, I digress. Um you know, do we have like an air horn for the pro tips now? Or like, is there a siren that goes off? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like pro tip, right? We should like, get a little that would, be, that would be good. That yeah, would yeah. like that, yeah. So I felt inspired. I felt that my channeled my inner Brian Sights here. And, and I started thinking about what I did and, and what I wish I would have done more of. And, and sometimes what I do now is, is so Dave or, or Brian, when those people catch you in passing and they have something really important they want to discuss with you, mm-hmm. you know, my trick, and I don't know where I learned this or how I did it, I'm sure someone taught me. But it was what I realized if, if someone catches you in that awkward moment and, and you can't dedicate that time to them or they want to set up an appointment, I always put it back on them. 
I always put it back on them. And, and I'll tell you how is, hey, can you drop me a line? Can you shoot me an email? Can you send out a calendar invite? That way the onus is off of me. And the more stuff I can clear off my head, off my shoulders, the better I'm going to be for them. Because if it's important, they're reaching out to me. Correct. And all I got to do is, it, once it's in my email, it's trapped. I'm not going to forget about it. But if we converse, I'm over. This, uh, this is a Dave Ross pro tip. Pro tip. <laughs> <laughs> I might have learned it from him. I don't no, know. No, he, he taught me this this year. I love and, it. And I love what it. Did like, I teach you what? When someone comes to you and they ask you to do something mm-hmm. and they want to steal, say, eight hours of your time. <laughs> from only eight hours. Eight, eight minutes or yeah. hours. Yeah. Or, yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is. You put something back on them. All right. I can do this if you do this, 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 and this, mm-hmm. and this, and this, this, and this. Oh, yeah. And then it just disappears. Well, people, yeah, people start leaving your office with things to do. They yeah. stop coming. Co- correct. But, but, <laughs> but, but, but passionate about it. No, 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 of course. Right. And then you want that person. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, no. And, and if it was truly important to them and this thing needed to be done we're, we're both going to carry the water like it's not yeah. just going to be one i person. need stay i need stakeholders <clears throat> yeah absolutely no. this isn't hot potato so to your to your pro tip pro tip <laughs> <I love that. laughs> i'll follow up with a little pro tip of my own and as for agenda i want to set aside 15 30 minutes whatever it is oh, for, for the meeting for the meeting yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah. put together oh, right. a strong agenda of what you want to talk about so we stay on task and that that, that 30 minutes is uber productive because mm-hmm. I want to going into 2021 we really want to make sure that we have everything moving very very quickly and very efficiently I and mean, we can't blame it on the pandemic anymore yeah no, that's, that's that's so true and, and I love that because if they put together a great agenda and they, and they do what you ask them they send out a thoughtful email and they mm-hmm. put the calendar invite in there you know that this is damn important to that person all of a sudden it triggers you your reaction right yeah so anyway, moving on from that is, is again, I can't, I can't stress the importance of how helpful can be if you miss an appointment for someone that they're really looking forward to all because you're not organized, right? And it's so easily avoidable. But I want to go further into LIST and talk about a little bit about your organization's organization. And we talked about your personal organization, how impactful LIST can be. Now let's talk about your organization's organization. Now, Brian, I know you really haven't dabbled in restaurants and maybe since you were a kid, but Dave, you you have in your adult life, right? I remember you managed front of the house, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, a little bit. Beautiful. Yeah. Love that. Now, I've eaten at a fair share yeah. of restaurants. <laughs> restaurants? Yeah, I like restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're good. <laughs> well, you got some food? So, uh, did you did you use a lot of lists in, in your days, or no? At that point, when I was, I probably wasn't there, honestly. I probably was bad at it, I would say. At that point in my life, I've increased that skill, I guess, over the years. You know, yeah, when I, working in the restaurant, I would say it was probably weakness at that time. I would argue it's a weakness for most restaurants, quite honestly. Everybody has those lists hanging on the wall, like whether it's a cleaning agenda or whether it's this or that. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times they're not worth the, the paper they're written on because we, we tend to be too complex and we think that, that the managerial aspect is, is eliminated. Once we post it on the wall, then everybody's going to abide by this 8.5 mm-hmm. by yeah. 11 mm-hmm. green. Yeah, right? Right. It doesn't work out that way. So you got to be very careful about what list you choose. But I want to talk specifically about some, some lists that I had and, and why I like them so much is – you know, we talk about clear expectations all the time. And, and when you have a talk with your staff and then you generate a to-do list or a checklist and then you reiterate and reinforce that, all of a sudden the expectations become crystal clear. And I'm okay. noticing in my consultation, like the more and more I go out, the, the smooth running operations or, or the quote unquote more successful operations, the ones that really harmonize and, and they have that amazing culture are the ones that are disorganized. They're the ones that have these effective lists. And I really wanted to kind of capture that because I'm looking at it like, man, it's that's a great list, right? Like mm-hmm. I, I'm a list admirer, so I look mm-hmm. at it like, ah, oh, that's fantastic. But then I see the, the other places where they got 700 hanging on the wall and they're all five years old and covered with grease and wrinkled and no one's yeah. used them. And it's just scenery at that point in time, you know? Uh, I wonder if you guys have ever encountered that or, or you had any thoughts on it? I think you see it everywhere. I mean, yeah. you know, again, I, lo- you know, the, I don't love this, but I agree with you on the thought of, you know, once I put it on a piece of paper and tack it up on the cork board, it's 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 rule you know what i mean it's like yeah. you know the, Everyone, okay it's, it's the work's done yeah you know <laughs> and, it, and it goes back to some of our great episodes on training it's all about training like you can yeah. have a great list but if you're not training that person up that this is important you need to let them know i mean that's the best thing i love about th- this episode <clears> in the <throat> list is employees wake up in the morning i believe that they do want to do a good job but they don't know what's important to you I, I have this all the time with my with my staff. It's all right. You have ten things to do today. But I'll tell you what, five and seven are the number one things that you mm-hmm. need to do today. Now you're you're thinking like, eh, if I get to it, I get to it. And it's like, no, no, those two need to mm-hmm. be done today, and then everything else is is just gravy. Right. And and you know, I got some good feedback this morning from one of our employees about that type of thing. Posting 
posting something. And I never thought about this this way, but from the employee, the way he took it, and this is a very good employee. He's conscientious. He wants to do a good job. He's a 110% kind of guy. You know what I mean? And he said that, you know, when you get the, the piece of paper in, the, in your paycheck or it's posted up on the board or you get this mass, everybody gets the same kind of communication of some certain thing to do. But it's something that is known to be done. It should be already be, being done, right? Like wash you know your hands like, when you're done using the bathroom. Whatever it is. Like, let, let's say, uh, okay, great point. But, yeah, okay, great but, but, let, but let's say that's it. And that's because yeah, yeah. that's a great example. Yeah. Okay. It goes out to everybody. Everybody gets the memo. Mm-hmm. Wash your hands when you're done using the bathroom. Yeah. His impression of that, he's like, he goes, I don't need reminded of that. Like, why am I getting this? Yeah. Can't we go to the person that's not? Because because in his impression is there's one or two people that aren't doing it. So management decided, well, instead of instead of going to those people and having a difficult conversation, we're going to blanket the whole organization. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, I, I don't like that because, like, I don't need that message because I'm doing it the right way. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I thought, hmm. Like, it was an interesting perspective. I, and I never thought of, of the employees, you know, uh, perspective on that type of communication but it comes back to again having relationships having radical yeah. candor don't manage the 99 percent based on the one percent screwing up love that go to the one percent and have the conversation and get it get it done that's great oh man that, that's an if that's not an outtake i don't know what is that's yeah. that's powerful no that's good because I, I never thought about but it that actually hit me you. today i was like yeah. i was like when he's he's explaining to him i'm like damn that makes sense that's such you a know? great point no. yeah i never thought of it either because are you <clears throat> are you losing hearts and minds by managing to everyone that yeah. way? Yes, yes, you are. Yeah, no, because I get those emails all the time in my other life, and I just delete them, delete them, delete them, and I shake my head and delete them, and I, and I lose vigor. I lose yeah. each time. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And now was he? Yeah, is his reaction a little more like stream? Maybe you know, at the end I, of the day, like it's, if it's chipping away, that's it. It's chipping away I, each yep. time. I think it's very honest because once you just blanket everything out, now you become like this huge corporation when at the end of the day no matter how big your organization is it's you know you have your manager and then you have the people underneath them that's a very tight-knit group you need to coach those people up make sure that you're training them and constantly doing this improvement cycle where you're getting better and better you don't get better by getting a mass email you're yeah. basically you're basically spamming your employees yeah and, and, and that's this exactly was, what it is yeah, yeah and this was yeah. another uh i think i saw this on linkedin stories recently but something that is very close to this is it says I don't, I don't know exactly how this was worded but it basically said to the point of the the easiest way to lose a good employee is to allow bad employees to be bad you know what I mean? So basically, like you allowing people to do the wrong thing yeah. or doing those blanket communications out the organization and not facing that one person is the easiest way for the good employees to go. What do we do? Employees, when they leave, if you have a pr- chronic problem of employees leaving you, isn't they're not leaving the company typically? They're leaving the manager. Of course, every time. Uh, it's people the, don't quit companies. No, <laughs> <laughs> they, they quit people. Yeah, they're tired of. You know, the kitchen manager, Tim, you know, beating up on him or they're tired of this person in the front of the house. Like you need to be aware of this stuff. Make sure that your people are honoring and respecting the people that that work for them and how this could help maybe some operators. But it's if your staff is conditioned a lot, a lot of the processes that you have don't need closely managed. Right. Like we, we become trained. It becomes habit. We clean the we clean the grill every Wednesday. We clean the hoods every Tuesday. That sort of thing. Biggest thing is, is if you're making a list like this, make sure it's reasonable. Make sure it has intent. A lot of times we have a tendency to, to again, to print it on eight and a half by 11. We throw it on a wall. We staple it there with authority and we walk away like, this is credo. This is what we're going to do from here on out. This yeah. is number seven of the 10 commandments of my management world, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely not effective. I think ultimately what you got to do is, is you got to take the time to explain to your people. You got to show your people. You got to train your people. And then you put the list up as a framework or a checklist. And I love that for accountability's sake. I love it for showing off sake where you can check it, put your initials by it and say, look, this is what I did. There's no disagreements here. I, I did my part. I'm good. I think it's good for morale that way. And I think it's good for self-policing. I'm sure there's some downsides to that sort of thing. But for the most part, I think it's a very positive thing. I think when it gets out of hand, it becomes excessive. You have 12 lists and, and things like that. But what I really want to narrow in here is is the lists that I felt to be most effective and, and the ones that I think a lot of operators are lacking. And Dave, you can probably attest to this. You know, in your days as a sales rep extraordinaire, winning DSR of the year, the Tri-County area, 150 times. <laughs> How do you feel about order guides? It was 152 times. Oh, sorry. Okay. I'm okay. sorry. Yeah, yeah, I got to get up on the stats. <clears throat> what do I feel about order guides? Order guides. All, all from like a yeah. the restaurateur standpoint? Yeah. Oh, it's critical. The best example I can give you is a chef I dealt with, and she had a notepad, like most chefs do. Yeah. And they wrote the, their stuff they needed down, but there's nothing. It's blank. Chef the stuff ads give me anxiety, by the way. Oh, just so it's, know. it's, you know, and then she would come out and read down through the thing. But this particular chef got six 
delivery days a week from her distributors. Wow. I was one of them. And she, so I, I was, let's say, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and somebody else was Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Mm-hmm. So it was next truck in. It didn't matter. Like, she brought truffles for me on Monday, and she brought truffles from the other guy on Wednesday. And she, you think about your buying power. You think about your pricing consistency. You think about everything. is out the window. Yeah. You know, so. But what's um, not out the window is her safety net. Well, well yeah, what about accuracy? Like, you, oh, you doesn't matter. There's you don't a truck to coming tomorrow. There's yeah. a truck coming tomorrow. You don't have to have it. What about tonight? I mean, listen. I don't appreciate her. It. I don't appreciate her approach, but quite honestly, like it's it's kind of brilliant because she she's realized, hey, look, I'm going to build a system that protects me from my weaknesses. No, but that's no. She built a system around laziness. Yeah, yeah. That's it's like throwing money at a problem. It's ridiculous because it, it, at the end of the day, she has no pricing power, so well, she's and, paying and, more. And ask me what margin I was charging her. Yeah. Oh, like. <laughs> no, I mean, you, you you pay for that level of service. Of course you do. Correct. Yeah, of course. Go back to episode 23, picking a distributor, I, well, selecting I, a distributor. I no, taught a purchasing you. class this, this, this semester, and yeah. I harped on that. I said, yeah. guys, do not let your distributor deliver to you more than three times a week. Like, stick with that. You'll be helping everybody out. It's a win-win, and then we won't have to find ways to win. Well, everybody the, can have this mutual relationship. Two deliveries, whatever, but six is ridiculous. Yeah, being a chef and a leader and a restaurant operator is not just about because you can cook great food. You know what I mean? There's a lot more things that go into it. And well, some of those efficiencies in organization is, yeah. you know, I, I think I know where you're going. Like somebody thinks, well, I got this. I mean, I got the, I'm the best. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and uh, everything else goes by the wayside because well, it's not as important. Unco- it's uncoach- not as important. Uncoachability. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, yeah. and I had it. I had a little dose of that. It was in a fine dining world. And you think you're on top of the world. And, mm-hmm. and you know what? <clears throat> Distributors are going to kiss my ass. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk the way I walk and you're, you're you going to walk with me. But you learn that from somebody. Oh yeah, you weren't born that way. No, I, you I learned that from you know someone that in, early in your career, and you went, okay, this is how it's done. And then when I got out of the industry, and, and thankfully I calmed down when I had a kid. Like I stopped being a sure. tyrant, I stopped being mean to people. Yeah. I realized like being nice and loving people was awesome. So I do that. And when I got out of the industry, it hit me like a ton of bricks at how many missteps I made yeah. and, and how many sales reps that that I treated like shit. And, and listen, I wasn't abusive, but at the same time, it wasn't like I was cordial. I, I didn't treat them like a partner. I, taught, I, I treated them like a, an indentured servant, if you will, mm-hmm. right? Like, you have to do what I say. A little that I know that, that I was paying for that. Uh, straight up, I was paying for that because, yeah. you know, listen, I, I was I was getting too many deliveries, too many companies, and I was spread out, and I wasn't treating them nicely. I, I thought I was their top priority, but I certainly wasn't, and I didn't deserve to be, quite frankly, and that's what it comes down to. So yeah. anyway, order guides, hugely important, right? Yes, Save absolutely. time, absolutely. get back to that, great. Um, standardized prep list, another one, obviously. I hope you have those, but if you don't, I still see a lot of operations that are doing the exact same thing, like a, a wrinkled up piece of notebook paper, and they're just writing down off the top of their head what they think to make that day. Do you have any idea how far wide open you leave yourself for mistakes doing that? Mm-hmm. How many missed prep items? How many how many hiccups in service you have because you didn't take the time to have the discipline to write out a proper prep list? And then following that, the the deep cleaning schedules are great, but the last two are my favorite, and this is where we'll wrap up. Line walkthrough checklists. Have you guys ever seen these before? No, what's that? <laughs> Thank you. You teed me up quite nicely there. <laughs> like we were playing a game of golf, right? So this is this is something I maybe the last five years of my work in the industry, I learned about these, and, and I don't know why I never use them because they're huge. But it's literally just a spreadsheet, and you have every station mapped out on the line, right? Whether it's a fry station, grill station, saute station. And as a chef, this works in twofold. You literally take your clipboard and your, your your Excel sheet, and this may sound like common sense to some people, but I promise you it's not really that commonly used or I wouldn't be talking about it or that jazzed about it. But you walk down the line. You say, Dave's my saute cook. I walk over there. Hey, Dave, what's happening, man? How's your pasta looking today? And Dave, you open your drawer, your cooler, and you show me all the pasta you got. You show me the rigatoni, you show me the fettuccine. We take a sniff. We talk about your par levels. We talk about life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. And now I'm engaging you on management, but walking around. Also, I'm checking all your mise en place. Mm -hmm. I'm checking the quantities and checking the freshness. You guys have never felt this pain, but you're middle of a Saturday night. You're expediting. Fire three salmon, two halibut, four steak, blah, blah, blah. And you go on, chef, I, I only have one halibut left. Wait, what do you mean you only have one halibut left? It's seven. We just opened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I well, I, I, I didn't I didn't get the butcher and I'm chef. I was running behind today. Like, what do you mean you're running behind? Why didn't you say something? You know, like yeah. they're, they're 10 minutes late. They're hung over and they didn't have time to butcher the halibut. So they make this shortcut decision. And now guess who's got to pay the price? Not mm-hmm. them. I got to figure out a way to carve the halibut up. I got to find a way to go tell the guests that they get their halibut. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I got to I got to work in a concerted effort in front of the house management on that. Like, hey, look, we're 86 in it, and inevitably, if you guys know, once you 86 an item, you always, always, always sell three more. I don't know why that's the way the world works, but the communication can't keep up with the product, and that's what happens. Then you have three disappointed guests, and it's a frustrating thing. But what I found was using these lists. It, it took me 15 minutes a day. I spent time with my employees, and I checked everything for accuracy. I had so many less hiccups during service. So many rotten products, so many shortages. 
this is if you get anything from this episode this is the takeaway pro tip mm-hmm. <laughs> pro tip yeah. uh you're gonna the, hate me i'm just gonna edit it i know <laughs> yeah, i love it uh i don't know if you guys read this book but the checklist manifesto it's it's such a great book. It was implemented strongly in the medical community. Surgeons, you know, they'd have a surgery and then they'd leave a sponge in somebody, and they're like, "Well, if we make a list, so how we many, how many sponges did we start with? Yeah, and so- how many sponges do we have now? Like, it, it's so easy. These are surgeons, and they make mistakes, and they have a, a whole staff of people, and they're you know, it's a two hour surgery. They make mistakes. Do you think your line cook or someone in your organization can't make a mistake? This is a great way to. Get contact with the person, but eliminate any errors. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, it's a double-edged sword, right? Mm-hmm. And, and it works at every level, at every segment, yeah. whether it's quick service or whether it's fine dining. It's 100%. such a beautiful approach. And I kick myself in the ass all the time because I didn't use this. You mm-hmm. know, it, it especially during developmental times as a chef, I made yeah. life so much harder for myself. I, I just, I was too busy. I was doing this and shit. I should have just got down to grassroots and spent time with my employees and talked to them. I would have saved myself ten headaches in the middle of service. Sure. How many more people would you have retained? Oh my God! And yeah. how many, how many more people would you have known if there was a, a life issue going on? You know, Joe's going through a divorce. Tom, right. Tom's on drugs Great again. Point. Like, what, what are those things that you missed just by not doing this? And you would have saved a ton of time. I mean, it's not even the time waster. You actually would have saved a significant amount of time. No, and I think that's a beautiful part about what you just explained. Is yeah, you got yourself uh, set up for that that service and, and with potentially no issues during during it, but connection that you created with, yeah. the, with the staff we forget even that. more powerful yeah. well and the other side of the coin is we run out of that halibut and guess what happens do you <laughs> think i go over there and shake their hand and give them a hug right yeah, like hell yeah. no i blow them up i'm right. yelling and screaming up so you talk about retaining talk about positive relationship mm-hmm. an excel spreadsheet 15 minutes could have salvaged all of that yeah i love that and, and, and let's carry it all the way through now what does the front of the house think the front of the house is like oh these guys always have it together the customers yeah. delighted mm-hmm. i mean the customer gets their halibut it's, yes. a, it's a powerful list. And yeah. it's, it's one that I don't see used. I see a lot of prep lists. I see a lot of order guides. I don't see line walk through your line walk through checklist. No, I, don't, I don't know if you guys experience this, but when someone is out of something after I ordered it and they, they come back and say, I'm out of it. Now, whatever meal I got is compared against the imaginary delicious halibut I would have had. <laughs> like this, the best halibut you will have ever tasted that doesn't exist. It's, it's, got yeah. singing around it's like you put this halibut on a pedestal and you're like, oh my God. Wanted that halibut. I was trying to yeah. stay on my diet. Like I didn't need that T-bone. Like, it, and then like it's just ingrained in you to want what you want when you're in a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Yep. And when you say, then they say you can't have it. It's like, oh, that's I didn't love that. <laughs> yeah, no, it sucks. It's a hurdle for the operator too because now mm-hmm. they got to salvage your experience, which I think we're going to talk about in a couple episodes. But it, you know, I, I think we should stop it there because that to me is is the list that I would like to see, and we'll put it in the show notes. Of course, I have some templates that I use. Oh, cool. If if I were an operator right now and I was not using this, I, I would start today. I would start today. One hundred percent. Because yeah. I, I guarantee you, every operator that listens can look back on the last four, five, six days and pick out a handful of times where they found out at the wrong times that they were out of something, yeah. something was spoiled, something was misrotated. All could have been avoided just by walking through and, and spending time with your employees and going over the meets and plus. Th- think about this. Using this takeaway, implementing it, will eliminate future problems. I mean, how easy is that? Like yeah. you could do this today and your January, your February, whatever is going to be better because you're going to implement this. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's that discipline equals freedom thing. You have the discipline to invest that 15, yeah. 20 minutes now. Now you have the freedom to not have those hiccups and headaches during service. I love that. Yeah. No, beautiful. Anthony, thank you so much for putting this together. Um, I'm actually going to, you know, put this out there without your uh, approval, but um, I'm sure I'll get it post. But uh, I, I mean, if you guys, Anthony has really become a ninja with this type of stuff. His organizational abilities are incredible. So that, that's why he led this episode. If you're listening to this and, and thinking like, yeah, I want to get better in this and you don't know where to start, reach out to us. Get on the website, you know, reach out to us on the website, find Anthony on LinkedIn, reach out to him. He'd be happy to come out and spend some time or, or whether it's over the phone or, or come out and actually see your operation and give you some of these tips. Uh, in person, I think it would be uh, an amazing opportunity. So take advantage of that. I love that. I would be so happy to do so. Yeah. So, no, thanks again, everybody, for listening. And uh, we will see you next time. Restaurantopia.com. Thank you. And this is a high quality pod. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everybody. Cut. Take care. Cut. Adios. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to Restaurantopia. The gratitude that we have for each and every one of you spending your precious time to listen to this podcast is immeasurable. Please make sure to tell a friend about this podcast. And also, if you have any feedback for us, visit us on restauranttopia.com and drop us a line. 
You can also subscribe on your favorite place to listen to podcasts. Thank you and have a great day. All right, let's, we're just we're gonna roll. Uh, pod let's gold. do it live. Pod <laughs> we're gonna do it live. Gold. We put out worse audio, I assure you. Oh no, I know we have. I'm fucking good zoom. The, the, your mic's your mic's plugged in I, again. It sounds good on on the other way. You were, you want me to pot it up a little bit? I don't know. Maybe. All right. So this is this is me. Now you can tell a difference. Oh. Okay. All right. So maybe I get a little closer to seven. So now I feel I feel like I'm echoey. What do you think? You talk. Hello. That's better. Good morning, Vietnam. No, that no. does sound better. Okay, that's Anthony. Yeah, man. He's always fucking good. Always fucking good. He's like always good. He's like always good. Always. Sun shines on a dog's ass sometimes. Everybody turn, turn your ringers off. Yeah. <laughs> Edits. Edits. Shh, you hear that? Shh, shh. That's the sound of an edit hitting the floor. Oh, that's, that's awesome. <laughs>